Thank you, David, and thank you very much. The live late lunchtime chat show, where in fact, uh, you see it's live, I've got the wrong camera straight away. <laughs> you. Where we take a look at the various aspects of the game, what's been happening, have a little bit of fun, and I think we'll give you a few laughs here in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. But it wasn't anything to laugh about yesterday, because it was pretty serious. You probably know by now, there was a very important meeting of the WPBSA, the controlling body of the sport at the hotel up from here, where they voted on a whole number of proposals, but they had one vote to say yes or no to a long string of proposals. This was introducing amateurs into the game, introducing people called non-tournament professionals, bringing billiard players in, and a few other things as well. The members had one vote. They said yes to everything or no to everything. And in the end, after a complicated system of a couple of votes, they threw it out, only just. Now, what would have happened then, had it gone through, the board would have had the right to invite Alison Fisher, the ladies' world champion, into the men's game. They could only do that if this other proposal went through, and it failed. John Spencer is the chairman of the WBSA. John, were you surprised that the big proposal failed and therefore no Alison Fisher? Um, well, slightly disappointed, obviously, uh, that it failed. But the general uh, feeling of the membership, uh, I was delighted with that they, they want to see the game opened up. The whole idea of this proposal was to open up the game, wasn't it? That's right. And that was the general feeling from the, the, the membership that we got. Mm. Do you feel it was a mistake to put all those proposals into one block? So I know some people said, I like part of the proposal, but I don't like the other bit. And I'm a bit worried that the fact that I can't actually vote on Alison Fisher. As a result, perhaps the end was a little bit false. Well, of course, Alison Fisher wasn't part of the proposals. Exactly. Um, yeah. But in hindsight, yes, I think perhaps put in the, the block as it was, uh, did have some bearing on it. Uh, but we have taken notice of the members' views from the floor, and uh, we were sitting down uh, with a meeting on the 30th of April, uh, when we were sitting down, uh, putting forward some further proposals, I mean, and hopefully call, uh, calling in a, a very quick EGM. Yeah but the matter's right. Well, Alison Fisher, no doubt, is going to be an attraction of the game in more ways than one, but, I mean, there are an awful lot of people in snooker who are higher up the rankings than she is. Why should she come in and the other people be kept out? Well, of course, uh, what people have got to remember, Alison Fisher is the world ladies' mm. champion. Yeah. Uh, and this is mainly the reason uh, she was thinking of being invited. But that's sexist. <laughs> well, we are sexist. <laughs> But I, I think, quite honestly, she might be more interested in getting in under her own right, rather than being squeezed in, as you might say, on a bit of a technicality. Well, I'm sure if she can get in it in her, whole, her yeah. own right, um, she would be more than delighted. Yeah. Um, but what we are feeling is that uh, it would also be helping uh, ladies snooker. Mm. And this year it's Alison Fisher. Mm. Next year the. Uh, World champion may not be Alison Fisher, mm. uh, but it will give them an incentive, you know, to to compete, um, and that was our view. Tony Knowles made some remarks a couple of days ago where he felt that the game was going the wrong way. You were trying to alter the rules for the wrong reason, and he said that you really these days should be thinking about a certain number of professionals playing in one tournament, say in North America, a certain number playing somewhere else, almost like golf. Can you see that happen? As long as I play in this country, I, and Tony plays in North America, that would be fine by me. Uh, no, I just, um, you know, I don't see that. I, I think we've got to put tournaments on for all the members to take part uh, in each tournament. But it is beginning to happen because Steve Davis this season has in fact decided not to play in quite a number of tournaments. He said it's too much. Well, obviously there's certain players, and you know, quite rightly, if they, if they think it's affecting the game by playing too many tournaments, uh, they have the right, of course, not to play in certain tournaments. But it, it is the association's duty to try and make the tournaments um, in such a way that they want to play in them. A lot of talk about the constitution of the governing body uh, and talk of that it's likely to change. Do you think some of the rules in the constitution have become a bit out of date in view of the way the game has progressed? Uh, quite possibly. I, I think possibly we have to look at the constitution um, in view of you know the growth of the sport. Mm. I mean, it's grown so quickly uh, that certain, certain things... I don't think there's a lot wrong with it. Mm. Um, certain things may have to be looked at. But I, in general, I, I I don't see very much wrong with the yeah. game at all. 
So this morning, uh, no great move forward. You've just come literally straight back from the meeting. Any big change from the meeting this morning? No big change, no. Um, a lot of discussions and, uh, as I say, we will be having a meeting on the 30th of April when um, a lot of more decisions will be made. Mm. Okay, John, thanks very much. Glad to see the eyes are getting better. You've got a bit of problem with those, haven't I you? I could nearly see you today. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us, because that was all a bit serious stuff, but it has to be. But we've got a few laughs coming up, and I know you like a laugh, so we'll uh, have a look at some of these as well. Thanks for all your letters so far, by the way. We're delighted to have them. Please don't tell us that you can get 155 and a maximum break, because we have answered that a number of times. We'll be talking about maximum breaks in a moment. We do have films of how to make a cue ball and how to make tables. We've shown them. We'll show them again. They seem to be very popular. And one of the letters that's been coming in, in fact, a whole batch of letters, is that what is wrong with the snooker players' brains in terms of mathematics? They say they don't seem to add up. We see the match on the screen. There's the score there, work it all out, and they spend hours standing around looking at the scoreboard. Have a look at this, for example. Dennis Taylor playing Neil Folds. 36.57 at the moment. 43.57. You at home would probably see that on the screen. There it is. Now, it's quite simple, isn't it? 35 left on the table. What's Dennis up to? He starts to think. Then he looks at the scoreboard in the arena. Now that's what that shows him. That's the fifth frame. He's on a break of 38. He had five points before he started the break. Um, 57 Neil Folds has got. Everything except the time in Tokyo. Now work all that out when you're right in the middle of the crucible, the most important venue in the game, and add it all up for yourself. It's very, very difficult. They don't see the score that you see on the screen. So they've got to add on the break score to what they had before, work out what's left, and also try and play top-class snooker. Bit of a mathematical problem, and they suffer occasionally from brain freeze, I can tell you. Even the best get it wrong. I mean, they call him the computer, Steve Davis, against Steve James. Just see and listen to what happened here. I think he's made a mistake and forgotten he wants a snooker climb. No. I think he might be going to play the snooker off the blue behind the black. Although the way he's played that, I'm not so sure. Well, this will be extraordinary if uh, he commits suicide in the seventh frame by potting the pink. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He knows now. Well, if you watch long enough, you see everything. I tell you what, you had to smile at the end. John Spencer's never seen that he was working somewhere else. He's laughing his head off here. You don't have the problem, John, do you? No, I never score above 10. So it's easy, <laughs> easy to add my break to the score. Now, you're probably wondering why the scoreboard doesn't show what we show on the screen. There are two reasons for it. A, although those scoreboards are only two years old and I'm told they cost a fortune, they can't actually do it. And even if they could, they wouldn't be allowed to. Because in the rules of the game, that would be classed as an aid to the player. You're not allowed to tell him what the score is by adding on his break to the running score. That sounds the most archaic rule I've ever heard in my life, and I think... Mr. Chairman, it was about time it was changed. They've got enough to worry about out there and everything else. Ridiculous. Fine thing. Thank you very much. Put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda. 
Uh, don't worry this year, there will be shot of the championship. We'll be picking up the shots and asking you to select uh, three. I'll give you all the details later on the week. The prize, two tickets here to the championship. Did you get last year's right? This was the one that was supposed to be the best. David Rowe on the green. Winning shot last year of shot of the championship. Down it goes. Don't put that on your card this year. That was last year's. There is one that could make this year's. Take a look at Terry Griffiths here on his way to his 1-3-1 break. Watch the pink and watch the cue ball. Round it goes. Brilliant. On his way to a possible 1-3-8. He's done all the hard work. Just the black that pop. Absolutely no trouble. 1-3-8 to go to the top of the high break list. £12,000. And he puts it to and he missed it. Would you believe that? Groans from everybody. How on earth could he miss that? 131 instead of 138. It left Steve James still at the top with 135. I'll tell you why he missed it. He actually, this is absolutely true. He confessed to us afterwards from the brown ball onwards, he'd been dying to go to the toilet. And he thought the black was so easy, just put the black down and run. Well, the black didn't go down, as you can see. So it could be the day that instead of Terry Griffiths spending a penny, he spent £12,000. It's unbelievable. Shots of the championship, yes, we'll have them. A lot of people said, how about fluke of the championship? Well, we've had one already. This could go to the top of the list if we were to run a competition. Have a look at this one. Dean Reynolds against John Parrott. Frame two. in that match. It continues this afternoon. I can update you on the other match you were watching before we came to shot of the championship with Cliff Thorburn and Doug Mountjoy. There it is. That's the end of the session. Cliff Thorburn three, Doug Mountjoy four, and that continues here tonight and four all in that match between Parrott and Reynolds. Having a little bit of fun, actually, at Terry Griffith's expense about missing the black, the £12,000 visit. Uh, of course, the man who still has the high break is Steve James. Here's how they stand. Steve James still at the top of 135 and uh, really in trouble against Steve Davis, of course, at the moment. And let's take a look at the way he played it. Steve James was, in fact, playing Alex Higgins, and it came in uh, the 11th frame of the match. Five all was the score in frames, and as we join it, Alex Higgins is at the table, and there's no score. Interesting to play out of that as if he were snookered. Has committed a foul. Free ball. Referee John Williams didn't give the free ball until uh, Steve James asked him whether he was sure that it wasn't. So a referee can change his decision on uh, the original decision being queried. So brown was an extra red, yellow was the ordinary colour. Three. Four. And by creating an extra red in that way, this is the only situation in which it's possible to score a break of more than 147. I don't think he'll be worrying about that uh, for a bit though. Ten.
Fifty-seven. Reddy's onto the centre pocket. He can get back to the black, but just needs to be a little careful. They're not easy centre pockets at this angle. Already the highest break of the match. Beautiful cue action, this man. No effort at all. Seventy-four. He's already done enough to be sure of winning this frame. Seventy-five. here Clive Eight. I should think for the high break prize as well the way they're looking 81. yes pink now and if he took four red blacks that would be 146 having had the help of a free ball with all the red still on the table break so far stands to Steve Davis with 118 93 just ran a little too close to the intended red the pair that's together there I'm surprised he's not taking the one to the middle but he must fancy this Oh, good shot. What a good shot that was. Definitely history in the making. 99. Now, we never had a 16 red clearance. 
in the championship. That's another very good shot. And if he knocks the lot in, it will be 135. And that would be formidable front runner for the £12,000 highest break prize. not even the first ever on television, the first ever in recognised tournament play in snooker. Magnificent break, but of course that was against Alex Higgins and Steve James, as you know now, playing uh, Steve Davis in the second round, where it's the best of uh, 25, and Steve James in all sorts of trouble. He's 5-11 down at the end of the session, which means that Steve Davis needs just two more to go through. So a big <coughs> uphill climb for Steve James, one of the most promising players in the game. A lot of people have actually written about that break. They said with that 16 red business, he could, of course, have scored more than 147. We all know you can do that. Like a 155 is absolutely top maximum. They say, had he scored more than 147, would he lost out on the £100,000 prize for a 147 break? No, he wouldn't have done because it's not for a 147. It is for a maximum break, a maximum break under the laws of the game. So he would still got hundred thousand pounds but you have to feel for somebody who came in afterwards and actually did a 147 which had only been done once in history at the world championship by cliff thorburn had he done that he wouldn't have got any money at all james would have taken the pot terrible i told about the letters we've had uh, quite a few as i say coming in already and one is from mr sills from rotherfield in sussex he says why no action replays in snooker coverage why don't we comment on techniques, etc.? Well, actually, while there are two tables playing here, there's so much going on, don't really have time to do it. But if you remember, always when it comes down to one table for semi-finals and final, we do do action replays. We have experts like John Spencer in here with me discussing the shots and uh, telling us exactly what happened and why you put side on the ball. So once we get down to the one table for the crunch matches, we shall be doing that. Don't worry about it. It'll be here. And the letters, of course, as you know, come in here to Snooker Break. And if you're thinking of writing, please do. Snooker Break, BBC Television, The Crucible Theatre, 55 Norfolk Street, Sheffield, S147UP. If you can do postcards, we'd appreciate it. But letters, they will all be read. We can't answer them personally. It's a pattern to uh, play the music in this little lunchtime interlude. So why don't we do just that? We've got a few favourites. And... Uh, this is one of mine. Mistakes, not just by the players, but we all get involved in it here. Mr. Jerry Rafferty. And he's got John Kemble in a bit of trouble here, snooker on all the reds. I didn't notice that one there. You need the reds and you need His tongue's poking out. Uh, would you dare stick your neck out, John? I think the one that scores the most points. <laughs> oh, and that's all the way. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. <laughs> that was a liar, yeah, lie.
Sorry. Tony Nero. And Eddie Charlton for a first time in the matches seems to have John Spencer on the defense. Seven snookers and all the colors for a tie. <laughs> Kirk Stevens has fought back. An amazing fluke in the last through three balls of the game brings him up to three. For I wish we'd had a camera in the commentary box on that occasion. I think the microphone went straight Batch. through the wind. First frame, Willie Thorne to break. He didn't think he was going to bring a red down past the blue spot from the break-off shot. He's fortunate to cover it with the green, though. I don't think Neil played for that red. Just getting back for a safety and it went straight in off into the centre pocket. Neil falls but he may benefit from this snooker that he has on Willie now. Six.
seven. Twenty-four. Thirty. Leopold was going along quite nicely until that unexpected miss with the rest. Folds expected uh, both reds to go back down the table. Yes, I don't think Willie can get the red closest to the black. Put the red to the centre pocket is on. He has two of them, in fact. But neither of them are easy shots. And the way the balls are now, I would suggest that the the next player that gets in could well run out in this frame.
six. This is a good start by Neil in the opening frame. He's looking very composed, concentrating nicely, and he's certainly queuing well. Misread that one, though. this long pot to get a start on. Bolt is already <laughs> past the winning post in this opening frame. Thirteen. He's hit the ball very solidly. He's going to take some beating if he keeps this up. Thirty 
So he's got the first frame one without Thorn potting a ball. So he had. He's looking um, very much more confident these days, Neil Folds. Well, Willie Thorne has potted at least a few balls in the uh, second frame. 12 points worth, in fact. But Neil Folds has got 43 points on the board, and he's back in play again. The black will be on to both corner pockets, but not the pink. Intended to make a fuller contact on the second red. And that would have left him with position on the black. Playing safety off the blue and edging it across towards a side cushion into a safer position. Knowing that Willie has enough points still on the table to win the frame. But he'll certainly have to work hard to win this frame now. Thorne deliberately developed to pink and black with that safety.
facing the black hard to the side cushion helps Neil's cause as well so quite a good shot that was Very good shot. Yes, the 1986 seven season when he reached third place in the world rankings, he was getting those more or less every time and he's starting to do it again. By making sure of the pink, folds has ensured that Thorn can only draw. And that's with three reds, three blacks, and all the colours. Good shot. And that was an even better one. Hit the red almost full ball and left them quite safe. Thorne won't want to pot a red unless he can get a black from it. If he takes any other colour, he would need a snooker.
11. Well, Willie Thorne has potted only two balls so far this afternoon. Twenty. And that's largely because Neil Folds has played so well. He's given him very few chances. Folds leads Willie Thorne by two frames to nil. If you go in this program, just to tell you that John Parrott has won the third frame. Good opener. Got to con control the cue ball though among the reds here. Willie Thorne's getting a bit of a charge going here. He ended the last frame with a break of 83. This is a good start to this one.
Yes, well, he didn't have quite the right angle on the pink to split the reds. He would have preferred to have had the pink straighter. Just couldn't get into the reds sufficiently to open them out. So his break may well have come to an end now. Well, that's a good shot. Oh, look at the cue ball, though. Bad luck, that is. Woody Thorne, 68, Neil Bowles, 4. It's particularly bad luck because if the cue ball hadn't gone in, that would have been enough to leave Folds needing a snooker. Free ball. Oh, dear. Free ball as well. means that in referee John Williams' opinion Folds couldn't from anywhere in the D get at uh, both edges of a red and uh, in this sort of situation all the reds are considered to be one so a red can be blocking a red as it is Folds has nominated Brown as his free ball Sizing up a plant shot now. If he can make it, he's going to open the reds as well. Good shot. And a definite possibility now that Folds could snatch this frame. to the cluster again I should think it would uh, leave him on the lowest red probably Meant to leave his next red straight to the middle.
And once again, that's a very good shot from Neil. At the perfect angle on the blue. Just a simple push through to be on the last red. All the colours on their spots. He's only got to hold himself together now. Not absolutely A1 on the blue. He's got to take the cue ball slightly away from the yellow. He's got the yellow though. This looks like 4 2 coming up. 46. 50. Not a good one. Got the wrong angle on the blue. He either has to play it with speed and take the cue ball in and out of Bork and back to the pink, or play the gentle run through and leave himself a distance from the pink. He was in total command on the brown, but he isn't now. Hard enough, he intended to be on the other side of the table. Balls, 55. Well, he was stretching a bit on the shot and moved on it. It was a fine reply, but having got so far, he really should have won it. Steady himself. He can pop this pink. He will still win the frame. Audience coming down the stairs in direct line with Willie's intended pot on the pink, so it is better to wait. Now what a frame saver for Willie if he can knock this pink in. <laughs> Willie Thorne opened with 68. He suffered a cruel in off. He looked as if he was going to lose the frame. But with that pink he has won it to level the match at 3 all. Good concentration by Thorne there. Very conscious, I think, that he's only beaten Folds three times in ten meetings. It's the first time they've ever met in the World Championship. We move straight on to the next frame. Willie's got eight points on the board. Folds yet to score. There's a tempting red down there, but he's got to get it right. certainly beginning to favour Willie Thorne. He was having a bit of a rough ride early on, but things have changed.
Fifty-six, touching ball. Mm -hmm. Willie's looking a little disappointed, so there may not be a red on after that shot. type of shot you always need things going for you to take the cue ball into the reds and but it was a very nice break not quite enough and uh, he almost lost the last frame after making a break of 68 But uh, he has played well these last three frames. Terrific pot, but couldn't control the position.
well picked out. Green and one more red. Would leave Folds needing a snooker. Twenty-seven. We've seen some fluent, high-quality stuff from Willie Thorne in these last three frames. He's made breaks of 83, 68 and 56. 35. So it looks like four breaks over 50 coming up in three frames. 46. What a good player he is when he's going well. <laughs> Willie Thorne's three-frame winning streak takes him from 3-1 down to 4-3 up. So, coming to the end of this shortened programme, I can update that score for you. Neil Folds has just won the last of the session. So, Willie Thorne, four. Neil Folds, four, as they go into the interval. John Parrott was at 5-7. John Parrott has just taken one more at 6-7. That's a pretty slow match. It's still going on here. Quite a long way to go in the session. And they've just started the next frame down there. Dean Reynolds on 12. John Parrott on one. So that one's got quite a way to go and in direct contrast to the excellent snooker we've been seeing this afternoon from Willie Thorne and Neil Foles, which you saw was at four all. Remember, these are second round matches and uh, it's the best of 25, the first two 13. So that's it for now. Sorry, I can't. Bending round the pink. That always looked a bit ambitious. And now that uh, he's conceded a free ball, he might reflect that that wasn't perhaps the best escape route. So green is an extra red. needs to get this blue though.
he doesn't, he would need more than one snooker. Now that he has got it, he's in a position to lay that snooker. Six. So having been 51 behind, with only one red remaining, Woody Thorne has got the pressure on Neil Folds. of that red. How much he would have liked to have left himself a better position on the black. turn up this would be Seventeen. just blue pink and black needed to tie Twenty-two. he's in prime position to do it Black is required. <laughs> Neil Folds will be very sick if he loses this frame, having been in an apparently impregnable position. That's short. That would have given Willie Thorne a 5-3 overnight lead. This is for Neil Folds to level at four all. Where's the white? <laughs> well, a great frame to finish a great session. Four all overnight. Two sessions tomorrow to decide it. Good match. We saw a lot of it this afternoon. Just been a little unfortunate there. Played a good shot to get on the plate, but unfortunately, it's finished hampered by that red, so a safety shot. 
Leopold H. Sixteen. Seventeen. And this time, Neil over hit the white there. We're certainly playing for the red into the centre pocket. Neil Paul's 32. And that's the problem. But a very, very confident start from Neil and a 44 point lead. Care and the 
equipment he's taking indicates that uh, the red will go. And not a great deal of risk attached to it. So not quite got the angle for the black now, down for the blue off this red. Twenty-two. New pots the blue, a seventy-one point lead, which would be sufficient to leave Will and Indian snookers. And that was quite a long way out. And Willie says he concedes, so Leo Folds makes it 5-4 in his favour. Well, what an opening frame for Neil John. Started very well there, and I suppose really, ideally there, he would like to have kept uh, Willie Thorne stone cold because he hadn't scored, but he didn't. But even so, Willie didn't uh, follow it through, so what do you think? We're all set for a drama? Well, obviously, uh, Willie will be very disappointed there. Did have a couple of chances in the frame, but even at the end, uh, when he was just trying to get some practice in, he missed the black off the spot, which, of course, doesn't do your confidence any good. Um, but long way to go in the match, and, of course, one shot can change the match completely. Um, just looking forward to 
you know, the same standard of snooker throughout. I think will all be in for an enjoyable morning. Yes, I must say that uh, Neil is looking very, very solid indeed. And of course, those are the sort of things that can suddenly change a match. A bad break from Neil Five. allows Willie in straight away, and we can string a bit of a break together, of course, would do his confidence a lot of good. A little surprised at the choice of shot there from Willie. Was going to go at the double come safety. But he has given Neil a, a chance of the red, I think, into the yellow pocket. When he could have had him tied up on the bolt cushion. was really a great shot uh, by Neil. And now a chance to collect a few open reds here. Twelve. 
12. A little unfortunate to, to see the black covered there. so far and it's a pretty good 25 he's worked hard for these points Well, maybe a little too intent on the reds. So now, Billy Thorne has a chance here. But again, the colours, they're rather tied up, so... There's a bit to do. As an angle on the pink here, I, I think we wish it to disturb those red and the blue can do so. And now I think we'll probably see him when potting this red, just a little stun onto the red to the right of the Seven. black. The angle looks perfect to leave the black into this left hand corner pocket. I think Willie was querying whether the pink would spot correctly. blue of course would send a red towards the pocket he had a look at it and 
that's just right. Fifteen. Sixteen. Certainly won't be too happy with that shot. Not much too near the side cushion. But if he drops the black in, he will finish on the red into the centre. This is when the problems start for Willie. Just the one red, really, at the back of the black that is available, but if he comes down for that, he has to get the pace exactly right. That mistake by Neil wants to say this is a chance for Willie. He has the problem with the red tied up with the blue and pink there, but you can get good position now on the Five. blank. to try and do it off the yellow so this has to be accurate now side cushion and into that little cluster with a 22 point lead should he get on the red of course could be end of frame Certainly not the best shot in the world from Willie.
Shouldn't this in too easy? A little near the side cushion, but as the right angle to force the brown in and bring the white down for the blue. And this could be the key shot in this frame. He certainly would like to have been straighter on the blue there, but he's going to play safe and no option actually. But he's played it very well indeed. Two balls, 16. And I must say that Neil Folds to me is looking very good indeed. Great shot that was. Yes, and that puts Willie 13 points in front with 13 on the table. So Willie Thorne takes an excellent pink there and gets the score level again. Five all. Good stuff again from this pair. And uh, between frames here, just a reminder if you're just joining us of the situation in the a world Championship. Steve Davis threw last night 13-7 against Steve James and how he'll now meet the winner of the match we're watching between Willie Thorne and Neil Folds. They play to a finish uh, tonight. There are the other matches to come. The other matches uh, played to a finish today are Cliff Thorburn and Doug Mountjoy. Eight all at the moment and uh, that's a real uh, epic and marathon struggle. And uh, so is the one at the bottom there, John Parrott, seven Dean Reynolds, eight at the moment, and we'll have uh, some action from that. They're playing to a finish this morning. We'll have some action from that later on in this program. So back live into the arena. Willie Thorne about to start. Five all. All yours, Jack. And, well, a good break. Poor Neil looks at that shot in disgust. Never mind. Long way to go. Excellent shot there from Willie. Controlled it well and all but two or three more reds here, so chance of getting a few points together. Thirty-two. 
James Willey playing it the hard way, taking all the open reds fast. Ah, that's a clever shot. And obviously showing there is confidence. Going into the reds, although there was still a loose red to play for. But he has a red into the centre here and should he knock this in, he could virtually go on and win the frame from it. Well, he had to put a lot of concentration into that pot, it wasn't easy. He's such a good break builder, of course, Willie. When he does get going in the break, tends to make it look very easy. Yes, John, that's an interesting point. I feel that Willie perhaps has spent too much of his life making breaks. 57. And uh, perhaps if he'd have been thinking a little more about winning, he might get some of the results that his uh, quality of play deserves. 65. So just the black and one more red to leave Neil needing snookers. It looks as though he's been a little unfortunate there, so frame not safe. Had it been, of course, it was nine blacks that Willie had taken and nine reds. There was a possible one for seven on. He may be attempting a double here. And I couldn't believe that Willie played that double. Although there was a maximum on, he still had to win the frame. Possible 75 points on the table.
young. New Falls, 17. Well, lucky, luckily for Willie, he's now got away with it. That miss on the black means that Neil needs snookers. Essential that Neil gets a black off one of these reds. No. And now he requires the black and one snooker to tie. Ideally there, Neil would have liked to have been right behind the pink. I thought it was uh, possible to do it, but he seemed to uh, get a bad contact there. And that's right full in the face by the left. And has he laid a snooker? I believe he has.
seven. So Willie Thorne takes the lead, six frames to five. And that was a perfect illustration of the what I was trying to explain about Willie Thorne and his brake building. He has, over the years, if anybody has played with Willie, and I'm sure John will endorse what I'm going to say, that when he practices, his ambition is to make a 147 every frame. And he, when you break off, he knocks all the reds open and starts attacking red, black, red, black. And directly you break down, he starts re-racks and starts again. And it's my honest opinion, and I've never expressed this before, that he is such a lovely player, such a beautiful player, that he's instilled in his mind that you have to keep going for reds and blacks and building breaks. And as a consequence, he's lost a little bit of the fire of winning, wanting to win. And uh, I'm sure, John, you've played with him so many times, you will, you will be quite aware of what I'm saying. Well, to an extent, Jack, but I don't <laughs> agree with all you say. Uh, the game, in actual fact, is about the scoring power when you're, you're actually getting at the table. And this is making breaks. And, uh, you know, if, certainly in practice, if Willie's targeted to make 147s, then that's a good thing to have. You have to have a target to aim at when you're practicing. It's no good just going on the table and knocking balls about. Uh, you need to have a a target to aim at to keep your concentration going, but in an instance that Willie had there where he had a possible 147 on, his first 12, thing should have been to win the frame. And that was a very good shot there from Neil, using the back of the pack of the reds to screw off and hold for the blank. And it also, of course, opened up quite a few reds here. So from nothing, suddenly opportunity to get quite a few points together.
Forty-five. And this is a result 52. of that first shot of Neil that opened the game up completely. Looks quite uh, relaxed and happy there, doesn't he? <laughs> of course, in a match like this, Jake, both players playing exceptionally well and both looking full of confidence. Yes, in fact, John, it's nice to see uh, Neil. I mean, he's such a young man and he had two terrible 60. years, which we won't go into, but. Uh, he was on the verge of really breaking through and it's nice to see him coming really good again. One from Neil, but not sufficient to clinch the frame. Now, uh, possible 75 left on the table. Yes, what did I do wrong, he's thinking. obviously intended to go down for the blue 
and left it short. So now has to doesn't like it, so still taking the blue. has the angle to disturb the red and the pink he requires and I'm sure that's what he's going to do. I think he's gone short again. Yes, I was rather surprised he didn't attempt to split that red and pink up the previous shot. Could he run it? Also, of course, been disturbing the two reds below the pink. So 43 the difference, which means Neil requires one red to leave Willie he needs snookers. Was that last shot put the brown on the side cushion? Will they may attempt to get that out here? Well, he couldn't do that if he tried a thousand times. He's just not uh, finding the pace at the moment. It's a great part, but needs a colour off this.
So now 30 points the difference. 30. Well, they're just checking the board. So green would be sufficient. a little here. This is one of the hard parts of professionalism, watching the other guy. and 24 points of difference, so just the one ball required. <coughs> and of course, these are the situations where the pressure comes on. <coughs> this is dangerous. He can't get underneath that yellow. And this is a chance for Willie again. That's a good shot from Willie. Not only playing the safety shot on the green, but of course bringing the brown out into the open. And although he's now 22 points behind, this could be a green ball game. This is quite a nasty one. Queuing is not uh, not easy. I don't think he can swerve that. He's a big chap. Whether he can reach it, well, he seems to be able to. Yes, that's well played.
Well, in this little bout of safety, it's uh, obvious that uh, Willie Thorne is calling the tune, rather. Neil has gone into his shell a little, defending very hard. This is a more difficult one now for Neil. Not too difficult to hit the green, but getting it safe. Another excellent shot from Willie. a chance and everything else sitting pretty it wasn't easy to keep control of the cue ball there Certainly not a bad shot from Willie. It's potable, this brown. But certainly not an easy pot. And not too easy to get safe from it. 
In fact, Neil may be forced to have a go at this. Obviously doesn't really fancy the pot, but if he tries to play safe off the edge of the brown, could soon get the double kiss. Yes, if he takes cushion first, John, he could uh, he could actually get well away around the table. I think we'll see him take it on. Similar situation here, maybe a little easier. And <laughs> this time, a little fortune for Willie there. Heart was in his mouth as it was rolling towards that centre pocket, but stopped short of it. So still one ball required by Neil. That was a good shot. It was the only way to get safe, and he found it. Excellent shot. Is snooker. But in actual fact, Jack, it doesn't make that much difference to the game. The brown isn't left. Neil, 21 points in front now, so. Uh, 19 points in front, I should say, so still needs the brown to clinch the frame. But this time, that enough could make a disastrous change to this game. I was very surprised at Neil taking that brown on. 
Well, the difficult ball Willis still has to negotiate is the black. Has to get on the pink in such a way that he can get across and get that black. Nine. Well, he's he's got the angle there if he wants to. He can either deep screw or run through. And I'm surprised. Normally, I would have thought he might have screwed that soft screw. He's so good at that type of shot. So now, just a good pot here. We'll take the white ball back to the black, so every chance for Neil. Well, in actual fact, Jackie only needs the pink. Very close frame indeed, and the score six all at the end. Tingling, gentlemen, 15 minutes. Please be Nerve tingling stuff between Willie Thorne and Neil Folds. Another four cracking frames there. Great entertainment, and the good news is we'll be back with them live when they return after their 20 minute interval. Now, John Parrott and Dean Reynolds are playing to a finish in their second round match uh, here this morning. And if it's anything to go by, they'll take some time to do it because they've only managed, uh, well, they've managed one frame short of the, uh, the frames, the 16 frames they should have done. with the same problem but just about got the angle here to come down for this red but I'm sure would like to get an angle on the blue now to come down and, and split the red and the black 13. and we'll be disappointed with that left it much too short Well, that shot by Neil there has certainly opened the game up. Well, the pink back, back into play. Well, things went wrong there. So now Neil just 19 points behind. Couldn't ask for more than this.
one. And that's not the best shot in the world. Now this time he might well use the pink, far easier to control the cue ball this time. Unfortunately there, Neil, got all of the white too good. 20. But it's a little tight against the cushion, so this red isn't as easy as it looks, although he will be dropping behind the pink should he pot it. He could well have done without uh, that little kiss there. So the red now becomes a little bit of a problem. So very wisely leaves it to Willie. And of course that was the one thing Willie was afraid of. Wanted to get the other side of the red. So two points in front, and this has to be a chance for Neil. And that wasn't the best shot in the world, but it worked out well for him. Brown and blue required to 
believe Willie needs his mucus. So a nice little clean up there by uh, Neil Folds gives him the advantage of one frame, seven frames to six. Well, that was uh, well played by Neil, and I was, well, I'm so impressed with Neil uh, this season. This is the first time I've seen him for, uh, well, a year. And I went to his dressing room at the interval and asked if he'd lengthened his queue. And in fact, he has, the, at the beginning of the season, he's had three inches put on his cue. And John, to me, it makes him look a different player. I, I hope it uh, all goes well for him. Well, he's certainly playing much better this season. Whether it's to do with <laughs> three inches on the end of his cue or not, I don't know. I think it's more in the mind. Uh, the cue is just an implement you use. And if your mind is happy with it, then it, that's the thing to use. Yeah, well, that's why he put the three inches on. 14th frame, Neil falls to Britain.
Neil won't be Eight. too happy with that shot. Under hit it, wanted to get a bit further for this red, straight into the corner pocket. the problem with this game once you lose that little bit of position it can make such a difference instead of Neil being in now Will is in with an excellent chance to Willie played for the pink there but looks to be hampered by that red so I may elect to take the blue That's gone wrong. And this is a tough one. Oh, that's a great shot. And it was just as well there weren't too many loose reds about. That would have made that a very much a pressure shot. Yes, and that's another great shot Willie played. It wasn't much of an angle to get into the pack. But as usual, you need that little bit of running when you're splitting the reds. Unfortunately, Willie didn't get it there, so just a safety shot now, back to the bulk end of the table. Yes, it's strange, John. He's quite humorous, really. Willie, when something goes wrong, he looks at the balls as though they've really disobeyed him.
And that's certainly going to cause Willie a problem. No easy pass back to the bulk end of the table. look on uh, Willie's face there. Certainly very, very close. So Neil says, try again. And that's a better one. <laughs> Wish he hadn't said it now. Or is that a mistake by Willie? <coughs> well, he's certainly in trouble again. In fact, snookered on all reds. Yeah, it's a real teaser this time. I think Willie might try one of the glancing blows here. No, I think, well, he was looking to go twice across the table. Yes, I think he's going to need a little bit of luck to get safe here.
And that rather lack shot there from Neil hitting the green instead of getting it tight near that ball cushion. Probably changed the advantage to Willie. Now, as the black into the centre pocket, if he re wishes, but this would be a pressure shot at this stage of the game, and I think we'll probably see him play safe. Yes, and that's the difference with Neil's safety and uh, Willie Thorne's. With these chaps, you have to be very, very careful. Oh dear, well, just look at this, what a feast. Yes, unfortunately for Neil, that was the sort of shot he had to take on. Probably didn't want to. One. But now, with an 18-point lead, certainly an excellent chance for Willie to clinch this frame. And that is just the one thing that Willie didn't want. Hampered on the pink. for a black off this red. Twenty. Black now will mean that Neil requires snookers. pretty well home and dry in this frame and what an excellent session this is proving to be 
excellent safety, excellent putting, good strategy all round, and the frames averaging 18 minutes each, that's pretty good. So Willie Thorne takes the frame and seven all it is. Now thanks to both players for some splendid entertainment there in this uh, first session of the day at the Crucible and they play to a finish tonight. And Parrot said thank you very much. Ten all, both of them three frames from a place in the quarterfinals. And uh, we'll see how that turns Willie out. Willie there yeah. to retrieve the situation. wish to have him in much better positions. Well, that's an unbelievable miss there from Willie. <coughs> Trying to force the white through for the red into the centre. Took his eye off the pink, obviously. And let an excellent chance slip there. Still 36 points in front. Twelve. 
18. Well, certainly not the shot that Neil played, but may come off for him. You knock this in the corner pocket, it's one of the difficult reds out of the way. and if he has the slightest of angles on the blue, he'll uh, be back on course. turned just enough to give him slight advantage for position here. So Neil goes two points in front. And if he can win this frame, it will certainly hurt Willie. Because Willie had it won at one stage. Could be a big reprieve for Willie. <coughs> Willie just looking at the board. Obviously, he wants to try and win the frame without having to take the pink on. So, by taking the blank, would then need yellow green brown and blue to clink the frame. So Willie Thorne takes the frame, one that nearly got away. He leads 8-7. Willie Thorne coming from behind to take that frame. He's done that a few times uh, in this match. And if he's going to win this last frame of the session, he's got to do it again. Because he's uh, at the table, 155 down. And that's uh, mainly because of a break of 47 by Neil. with that one.
One. Seven. So thank for for Willie. The pink wouldn't go on the black spot. That one shot 20. has virtually opened up all four reds. doesn't appear to have quite got the angle he would have liked.
38. So it's now looking that Neil Saviour may be that 45. blue in the left hand cushion there. Willie just trying to work out. Blackwood put him third. 13 in front. So in actual fact, you wouldn't need that blue. 46. Yes, in fact, John, he does need the blue. I think Willie was struggling to work that one out as well. 53. Well, what a seesaw match this is. Every frame is going backwards and forwards. It's quite good stuff. 55. And that was one of the important shots because he's got perfect on the green which gives him every opportunity now of getting on the brown in such a way as to either fall behind the blue or actually move the blue. 58. Oh dear. <laughs> a double kiss, the last thing he wanted. Yes, and that hurt. He could probably have stunned just past the blue for the blue into the green pocket, but very unfortunate there. And he's angled. He's caught him in the angle. Would you believe that? <laughs> what a shot, John. Goodness me. <laughs> yes. Well, that's unbelievable. First of all, Willie gets the double kiss. Plays a good safety shot. Neil Holt, but good enough. And they've now got Willie in terrible trouble. Well, it's a good job it's the best of 25. And of course the difference now with that foul stroke, Willie needs blue and pink to cleanse the frame. Well, it's very serious, really, but uh, everybody's finding it amusing. 
Yes, Neil, certainly living dangerous. But of course, whether he's lucky with those shots or not will only be decided when the, the frame is finished. If Willie wins the frame, then the luck hasn't been any use at all to Neil. Yes, certainly having a spell, Neil, here. He may just about be able to get through to clip it, but it's very, very tight. Of course, if he can clip it, he'll be putting it against the side cushion so it won't be too serious. I'm just wondering there if Willie miscounted and thought he only wanted the blue to clinch the frame. Still needs the pink. Oh, yes, and Willie's pleased with that one, so he ends this session leading by two frames, nine to seven. Man, that of a look at the match between Willie Thorne and Neil Folds. Tremendous match that's been. Good breaks, exciting frames, turnarounds, and as they came out tonight to play their last session, Willie Thorne was leading nine frames to seven. First frame they played tonight was a good one, close again. It's been that way all the way through, and Folds got it, 59-44, so it's now 9-8. Into frame 18, and this is close. Folds is just uh, in head, but all the equipment needed now for this shot. Both these players are being very kind to one another. Missing balls, they should be potting.
21. It was a well controlled shot. 30. Just gently into the four bunched reds to separate those and steering the cue ball onto one of the open reds. And the whole table's on for Willie now. There's nothing safe. Fifty-six. Excellent cue ball control from Willie during this break. Knew this red was onto the corner. He didn't have to play into them. And where it looked earlier on that he could clear the table, it's now looking a certainty. green back onto its spot perfect angle to position onto the yellow so 82. now it's 
the six colours. He's a lovely, fluent player when he's going well. And he has gone well quite a few times in this match. 2 frame advantage. He leads by 10 frames to 8. And that's the 8th century break of this year's Embassy World Championship on day 8. The important one is still Steve James there at the top with 135 which he got against Alex Higgins in round 1 and of course if he stays there Steve James who's out of the championship will win £12,000 for the top break. There's a long way to go yet. Not too surprisingly, Willie after that was cock -a hoop and he took the next frame as well to lead 11-8. Then back came Neil Foles to take three in a row. So it's 11-all, and there's only one point difference in this one. Foles to play. 2 ball is finished. Neil is not wishing that red had missed the centre pocket. He did try for the the double, but he wanted better position on the black than this is. Yes, he wouldn't risk cutting it to the corner. It was on, but decided on the safety and that's keeping Willie under the hammer. Got it much closer. No, it was a great try. I've got to feel sorry for Willie with that one. He was bold enough to take it on. He's left them again now. One. And having been 11 8 up. Now 11 all, and Thorne facing the prospect of going one down with two to play. Folds exploits this position to the full.
Yes, that was a good one. 33. I feel that was Willie's last chance to win this frame. Had Neil missed the black, but he played the shot nicely. 34. And he's in full control here. Folds knows he's won this frame now. With a four-frame winning streak, Neil Folds has gone one up with two to play at 12-11. Yes, and don't forget, Willie Thorne, after that century break and winning another frame, have been ahead 11 frames to eight. Now he's in real trouble. He's got to win all that's left in the match, the two frames. Here's the next they play, and Folds has the lead coming to the later stages. Willie Thorne, having shown signs of cracking under the pressure of trying to win the match, is holding it pretty well under the pressure of trying to save it. Now can he get in behind the pink for a snooker? Oh, he's not hard enough. He could well have left it on. I think the pot is on, but it's not an easy one.
just tried to make sure of the pot. Didn't even stun the cue ball. So now there's only seven points in it. shot from Willie bought the blue out so there's only the pink safe now mm, that's a good one shot from Willie hasn't actually kept it safe but it was a good shot to hit it and that's all he could really hope to do from that very good snooker that he was caught in at least he didn't leave the yellow straighter to the middle So Fold being unable to get position on the green if he'd gone for the yellow. Settled for another snooker. Good choice of shot. And Willie can play to the cushion on the right side of the table but the brown is in the way so the odds about Willie hitting this yellow are fairly long it's a tough snooker for no miss to be awarded, but is it a free ball? Free ball. Willie Thorne querying that. The key is whether Folds could get through to the left-hand edge of the yellow. John Williams putting another ball there as uh, an additional guide. Thorne quite within his rights to query the decision. It's not like football. There is time to correct it. <laughs> so, it's not a free ball. joke there was that uh, Thorn said and not a miss it would have been very late in the day to award that can't get through to the left hand edge of the yellow so Thorn or rather Folds exercise exercises his other option to put Thorn in again
総法Well, it's bad enough to give the four points, but at least the yellow isn't on. Another very good shot from Millie. And a few moments ago, at least three of the colours were in safe positions against cushions. And currently, they are all on. left that safe. The angle to the centre pocket is far too acute for Willie to go for it, I would think. This vital frame, already in progress 45 minutes, by far the longest of the match. Is there enough of the yellow sticking out for Thorne to be able to pot it? After some tremendous tactical play, a chance to snatch the frame. <laughs> After all that, how could he do it? He lost his concentration, that's how. And nobody could ask for an easier match ball than this. Thorne had his chance to snatch the frame. Twelve. Willie Thorne did some good front running, but faded on the finishing straight. Neil Folds kept going and finished a 13-11 winner. So that's another question answered on this four-match late night. Neil Folds plays Steve Davis in the quarterfinals. But 